it's gonna be cool. <laughs> the topics and opinions expressed on the Dudes and Beer podcast are intended for an audience of 18 and up and are solely those of the hosts and guests. They neither reflect the opinions or values of either the sponsors of Dudes and Beer or your mother. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard these guys? They'll talk about anything. Whoa, whoa, hey, you think they're going to show it? <laughs> uh, they'll probably just blur it out. <laughs> whoa, check it out, Beavis. Get ready to sit back, relax, and open your mind. Welcome to Thinking Deeply with Dudes and Beer. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Thinking Deeply. I am Chris Jordan, your host, as well as the host of Dudes and Beer. Today, in this uh, 10th episode, we're going to be talking about the dangers of living a life full of fear, the dangers of actually, you know, just fully giving in to fear and letting it control your life. Uh, there is so much going on in our world right now, so much going on in our country right now that is just so entirely screaming of this uh, that I had to talk about it. I, I had to talk about it. Um, so when we get back from this message from our sponsor, we are actually going to get into the concept of fear, um, what causes fear, where it comes from, and uh what we can do to live a life without fear, uh, to actually not give into it, to not give into it, not giving into fear. So when we get back from this message from our sponsor. Hey, are you a musician? Do you play guitar, bass, or synthesizers? Are you a studio engineer looking for that different sound? Well, fret no longer. Austin Hot Mods is there for you. From Boss to Ibanez, DoD to EHX and more, Austin Hot Mods provides over 50 different modifications and customizations to some of the most popular guitar pedals on the market, from vintage to modern. So if you're looking for that boutique custom sound on a Craigslist budget, look no further. Contact Austin Hot Mods today and mention that you heard it here on the Dudes and Beer podcast for 5% off your first guitar pedal modification. Visit them online at austinhotmods.com. Tex is owned and operated and home of the Mod of the Month deal. That website again is AustinHotMods.com. And we are back, yeah. So, um, I was afraid for a second there that uh, we weren't going to come back at all. Bum, bum, bum. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> I was not afraid of that. Not afraid of that at all. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I knew right where we were. I knew that we were coming back. Um, <laughs> what is fear like? Really, really, when you think about it, when you think about it, what is that all about? You know, what is it about to be afraid? Um, and I'm I'm getting ready to realize some of this or re re realize, I guess, um, as I become a father. Um, the true irrationality of fear. Um, you know, and I heard somebody on Facebook, a good friend, um, Tia, shout out to Tia Williams out there, who was saying on Facebook the other day that, you know, you can't tell somebody that they're not offended. You know, you you can't, like, that. that's telling somebody that they're not sad. You know, that's, um, you can't tell somebody what their emotion is. You know, emotions are not necessarily rational either. They don't, they are rooted in the rational part of the brain. Emotions are much more rooted in the endocrine system. 
um, in fight or flight mechanism. Uh, so they don't necessarily have to do with rationality, you know, and, and, you know, a prime example of that is love, you know, look at love, love makes you do crazy things, man. You know, love will make you stay in a crazy situation because you love somebody. Um, and I've seen that happen in my family. I've seen that happen, <clears throat> excuse me, um, numerous, numerous places in life. Um, where somebody just keeps going and going and going. And that's, a, you know, it's an irrational thing and you don't understand it. You don't get it. But their fear keeps them going. Um, and and it's it's an irrational emotion, fear. Um, but it's, it's very rooted in um, what we are as animals. You know, uh, and I explain to my wife all the time that we are animals uh, in in the largest sense of the word, like, you know, homo homo sapien. We are somewhere in the primate family, uh, you know, something like that is what science tells us. We don't we don't have like we were discussing the other night. Uh, we're still missing a few skeletons to make it all complete. But um literally we're just big animals that are really really good at thinking and have have a spark of something different with us um and we need to we need to understand ourselves really to understand our fears and like i said coming to the point of being an expectant father right now um i wonder how many of my fears um, will A, be re-realized as I become a father. Right now, I, I'm sure, and right now I'm at the point where, you know, it's in there. I see it and I hear it, uh, everything else. Um, but it didn't, like, you know, there isn't any fear yet. I don't personally have any fear yet. Um, I'm sure that will come about. Um, as true reality sets in. But what I'm really interested in is the concept of fear with my child. Um, to see that, to see that, to, uh, to, to be able to explain it in a different way and to be able to um, comfort them and let them understand that the world is okay, that it's going to be okay. Um, and, you know, here recently with a lot of things politically and stuff like that going on in our world, you know, there was the whole safety pin campaign and stuff like that. You know, there were there were people um, even within my family that were like, my God, how do I how do I explain this to my eight year old child? And I'm like, why does it need explaining to your eight year old child? Why? Why? it needs explaining to your eight-year-old child I think you may have given your eight-year-old child a really huge impression of what's going on and I think you may be living out some of your own fears through that um, and you know like I said fear is irrational you cannot rationalize fear um, it's an emotion it's something that uh, it's it's a driving force. It's one of the things that, like I said, is tied to fight or flight and as human beings kept us alive for thousands of years, you know, before we had walls. Um, like that was one of the first driving factors of fire was fire kept kept things away like things didn't want to be things of the night didn't want to be near fire. So because that was a source of light and <clears throat> you know scared scared their prey and stuff like that so um we we made fire out of the necessity of not only fear but survival um so many things in our society are rooted in fear um how do we break that chain how do we how do we learn to cut off that reptilian amygdala part of our brain that is responsible for fight or flight um, and get past that irrationality 
You know, how do we how do we get past the irrationality of fear um, and live a life that is good and right um, by by all means, not by not by any religious means, but true to ourselves, you know, true to our potential as people, as as a humanity. Um, I don't like to get into creeds or anything um or or religious stuff a whole lot you know necessarily like um i don't i don't mind talking about the concept of religion but i don't like to get specific on religion um on this show and uh, you know uh to me fear um just it, it can be one of the most paralyzing factors in the world it can be one of the most horrifying things in the world um, to be afraid, to be afraid. And I remember, and, and I speak from experience on this, you know, I was, I was kind of a smaller kid. <clears throat> I got picked on a lot, but I wouldn't necessarily say I was afraid most of the time. I was afraid of some things. I was very afraid of heights. Didn't like heights at all. Um, still to this day, I, I get over it a lot whenever I work. Um, you know, I'll go up a 20 foot ladder, I'll go up a 30 foot ladder, stuff like that and do work. But about three quarters of the way up, my palms start sweating. Like it's, it's there. Um, but I've learned to push through that fear and do what I have to do. Um, and it took years to get to that point. Um, I remember I used to help my dad do roofing and that was, that was a big one, you know, climbing the ladder to get onto the roof. It was more taking the step off the roof to the ladder, uh, getting, getting off and going down backwards and being able to see down that, that messed with my head more than anything else. Um, and yeah, like to this day, heights, really high heights, you know, things like that, they get me going. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of, a whole lot of situations in life. I'm not afraid of, you know, I don't, I don't live my life in fear of a great apocalypse or anything like that. But there, there are people out there that do. And how, I don't know how, um, you can go through life with this concept of, um, people being out to get you or that, or that the world is getting ready to end because of something that happened, you know? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of fear going on in our country right now. And I think most of it is uh fear that we have put on a situation, fear that fear that has been hyped <clears throat> about something, um, you know, there's there's still <laughs> to me what's going on in our country right now is something that um is a decision that we've made uh on our own <laughs> to to allow things like this to happen to begin with um and our fear of what's going on just like it just like you know, people's political fears before the election, people's political fears now, stuff like that. They most of them are based irrationally. Um, they're based out of misunderstanding, you know, from from the fears of the lawmaker to the fears of the people under the law, um, which technically we're all under the law. But for some reason, those people don't think they are. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, you know, for people to literally be living their life in fear right now, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't, I don't buy into so much of that system to begin with that, uh, that I'm living my life in fear of the system. You know what I mean? Um, so I guess I, I don't grasp that as a rational fear. Uh, you know, I mean, there there are, I guess, some rational fears out there. There are some good things to be afraid of. You know, like you, you know, if if you see a group of men walking down the road with, 
even in even in a right to bear arms state, if you see three men walking down the road with rifles, you have a right to feel a little bit afraid. You know, that's not necessarily an irrational fear, um, but you should conquer that fear. You should get over it. You know, you should definitely, especially if it's a right to carry state and you can openly carry a firearm, um, that's somebody's right. You know, they may just be going to buy a carton of milk. Uh, Doesn't necessarily mean that they're up to no good. So uh, what causes that fear? Where where do we find the root of our fear? Like I said, for me... Um, fear comes from the irrational place inside of me. That's, that's just for me. Uh, I don't, I can't rationalize my fears. I don't know why I'm afraid of heights. Um, I know I fell out of a tree, uh, but I've climbed trees since I have no problem climbing a tree, you know, (laughs) I love climbing a good tree. Um, it's, it's other stuff. It's being in. You know, just like really, really high structures and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. It just, it puts me at a disease and I don't know why. And I guess the not understanding why is part of the irrational for me. Um, I don't know why I'm afraid of it. Um, And I guess most of my fears would be irrational, you know, Um there there are rational fears there are right there are reasons why people are afraid of things but the question is do you let that fear rule your life um and that was one of the big questions that happened in this country after 911 you know was uh if we live our life in fear if we live our life and don't get back on airplanes then the people who did that win um you know we have let fear conquer the day at that point and you can't live your life in fear um and that's that's the mantra for a lot of people i mean look at the look at the women's marches that just happened in washington and stuff like that they they um are afraid of something and went out and marched against it i mean and it was all over the country there were marches all over the world um and good for them good for them they got out they conquered a fear and and you know tried to i guess exact a change i i don't know what most of that was about um they yeah i mean i don't know <laughs> the for me the the marches and things like that i i fully respect anybody that wants to march about anything because that is your right it is fully your right to question things it is fully your right to do so in a peaceable manner which is what was done and fantastic uh i guess i don't like i said i don't buy into enough of the system uh to be afraid of the system you know, and be a, be afraid that what's happening is going to absolutely change life as we know it completely. I I really don't think so. Nobody's nobody's misplaced fears about our last president over the last eight years um, have led to anything, uh, because well, nothing nothing that horrible happened. Nothing that horrible will happen here. I don't think. Um, I'm not afraid of that. I I really think that reason will rule the day in the end, um, and it always will, uh, because that's that's what we're about here. Um, So for me, I don't live my life in a lot of fear right now. Um, And I know people on both sides of the fence that are and are not living their life in fear. Um, The question is, what do we do with our fear? How do we how do we handle our fear? What do we do with our fear when it does come about? You know, like I said, for me, um, being an acrophobe and being afraid of heights, you know, unfortunately, sometimes in my job, I got I got to be 20 feet off the ground to do some work. Um, So I better get over it and get a tool in my hand and get myself 20 feet up a ladder um, and get to doing some work. You know? Um, so 
I've had to learn to get over it. I've had to learn to get past my fear um, and push past the point of fear to do something and be focused on something else so that um, my fear is subsided, so that it it is not conquering me and keeping me back. Um, and believe me, there was a point in life where I was utterly conquered by fear. I was paralyzed by fear at one point in life um, to the point of indecision, like to an unhealthy point. Uh, and that was in my college years. Uh, I would I would literally be so afraid of something that I I would get stymied and get stuck in this circular motion of thought. Um, and I think that happens with so many people, with so many people. And it leads to depression. It leads to horrible places. It leads to bad things. And that's why um, I don't live my life via fear. I mean, and believe me, I've got a life that should be full of fears. Um, I'm a self-employed person, man, like, it depends on my next gig and when I'm getting my next gig and if I'm getting my next gig. And there's a lot of like, I know a lot of people that have tried to live a freelance life and they cannot, they cannot, they don't know how to deal with it when times get lean. Um, and believe me, times get lean, you know, um, and it takes an understanding wife in life to, uh, to grasp that. And, you know, we really, really work as a team to conquer that fear with each other um, because we both know that as human beings, we're going to have that panic response, you know, whenever a bill is late and stuff like that. Um, and it takes a mutual amount of control and a mutual amount of respect and understanding to know that we will get through this. Uh, we, 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 we will get through this. It's not just me going through it. There's more than one here. Um, remember that, relax on that, that makes it easier. There's more than one of us pulling this cart right now. Um, and, and that's what we have to remember even in this country. All right. Is that there's more than one of us pulling this cart right now. There's more than one of us doing stuff. So rest easy on that people. It's, it's a country, not just one person. It's a country, not just one person. They're, they're, methods in place by which to check that power so fear not all right <laughs> um i'm not saying that all fears are misplaced but i'm just saying you know um you don't have to you don't have to be all consumed by it you don't have to be all consumed by it you can live a life outside of that um, and still acknowledge it. You know, you have to acknowledge fear. You have to acknowledge its presence. It's what you do with it um, that makes the difference. It really is. Um, because, uh, like I said, I, I, I have to push past my fear. My fear is still there. I have to acknowledge that my fear is there. Um, I'm 20 feet up on a ladder. Normally with no hand on the ladder, you know, uh, my hand on something very wobbly while I'm fixing it. Um, and, and number one, you have to acknowledge that your fear is there and be okay with that and be like, all right, hey fear, how you doing? What's up? Um, and actually use that, use that to make you sharper, use that to make you work, work a little bit better and, and make sure that you're safer and stuff like that, you know, you really do um, focus in and realize like, okay, am I steady? Am I doing my job right? Am I like, it's, it's much different than when you're doing it on the ground. You know, a different process rolls through your head, or at least it should, um, unless you get paralyzed by fear. So I apply that same process whenever my fears happen is, you know, what can I use from my fear in this situation to actually make make things better out of this situation and kind of turn the fear on itself? Because I, I guess I lived life so crippled by fear to the point of indecision at one point that um, I just refused to live that way. I refused to uh, give into that and to give into that mentality. Um, I I choose to see myself in a different light and uh 
with a with a different realm and sense of what to do um now at least at that point I was very afraid of I had no idea what I was doing in life I had no idea what I was doing with my life so um there was a lot of fear there was a lot of fear there um and I've said it before in this in these episodes and thinking deeply that uh, for me, it was operating life through the fear or operating my life through the fear that I was disappointing people with what I was doing. Um, and the fact is, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, that's probably the one thing that made the biggest decision is when I realized the fact that I shouldn't care what other people think about my personal decision. It's my decision. Um, and I won't be stymied in my life and in how I live my life um, by the fear of what I think somebody else thinks. Number one, I'm putting that onto them. I don't know that they actually think that. I just think they think that. Um, so how narrow-minded of me, how fearful of me to begin with. Um, and I just let fear make, make that decision for me. Um, and that's not right. That's not a healthy thing. That's not a good thing. Um, you shouldn't be putting thoughts into people's heads. You shouldn't be putting words into people's mouths. So, um, you know, we have to be careful of that in life. Uh, I had to learn to be careful of that anyway. Um, and not to cast aspersions onto situations that, um, don't exist yet, that aren't there yet, that don't, um you know, have not come to fruition. You know, you can't, you can't tell what's going to happen. So don't, don't make believe that you can and don't, don't let it rule the day that you can't, you know, just accept that, be okay with that and deal with what's happening right now. Deal with, deal with what's happening right now in your life, in your life, in your life, you know, have your cabinets in order. Have your shelves squared off, you know, um, and and that that in and of itself for me uh, takes care of a lot of fear, making sure that I have myself square um, and and because I have myself square because I'm square with my wife. We're open about all spending um, because uh we're square on how we deal with bills and taking care of bills. Um, because of all that stuff, I have very few fears in my household. Um, very few fears for our safety or anything like that. You know, uh, like I said, as an expectant father, I'm interested to see where that goes. Um, once my child actually gets here and see what fears manifest in me. Um, and not just in me, but um, what my child is afraid of as opposed to what I was afraid of, what I remember being afraid of. And, you know, how how I react to and deal with those fears with them. Um, and, you know, hopefully I've still got the touch. Hopefully I... I <laughs> um, but... We can we can definitely be sure in our own life and on in our own decision making um, that we aren't ruled by fear. We can't make decisions for other people, folks. We can't we can't force other people to make the t decisions the way we would make them. We can't force people to think the way that we think to do the things that we do. Um, all we can control is our reaction to them. That's it. That's it. Um, and to me, uh, when a reaction is fear based, um, it, 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 you've now let fear, you've now manifested fear into the world. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Um, that's, that's my concern is manifesting fear into the world. And I've talked about, manifesting on this show before and the concept of manifestation I've talked about it on dudes and beer I'm a big big believer in it and I don't 
uh, I don't ascribe to manifesting fear. I don't ascribe to putting my fear out into the world. Um, that is a quiet battle for me to win, uh, because it's my fear. Um, so uh, that's, that's how I look at it. That's how I deal with it. And I don't, I don't let my fears, uh, actually like make my decisions for me. Um, because that would be manifesting fear, um, and allowing it to make the decision. And that to me is one of the most important things is trying to keep fear fully in check, trying to make sure that, um, we as people learn to open ourselves up to new experience, learn to open our horizons, learn to open our brain barriers and get outside this box. So until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this installment of Thinking Deeply with Dudes and Beer. Tune in next time for more deep introspection, contemplative thought, and general musings on humanity and life. Right here on Thinking Deeply with Dudes and Beer. Like what you heard? Feel free to tune into the other content by Dudes and Beer on dudesandbeer.com. Our content is also available on the Spreaker market as well as SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast app. Dudes and Beer is a proud member of the Revolution Digital Group family of podcasts. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly.